perceive, process, perform. Do you need inspiration for your practice? Or do you simply need to practice inspiration? With this series, we aim to do both. Give us 15 minutes and we'll give you practice inspiration. Well, I'm Chandra Adwani, a prosthodontist from Bellevue, Washington, and I'm going to give you some information about implants, why they fail, fail and why they succeed. So this was done from the Seattle Study Club presentation 2017. My background, I am a full-time clinical dentist. I'm a prosthodontist in Bellevue and I work on patients four days a week, but my hobby I'm the most boring dentist in the world because I love my profession so much, it's also my hobby. So I look at research and what I want to know is the science behind what we do. So I currently work with all these different departments and I've written some books particularly related to implants and restoration. My favourite of these books is this one, Dental Implant Complications. We have 40 authors, 700 pages. Now if your belief is that dental implants are highly successful and have a success rate of 95, 96, 97%, we've wasted our time because nobody wants to read about failures that occur in five, six, seven percent of times. They want to know about failures that occur and why they occur. And so I'm going to divulge with you some of the information that I've been researching and try and give you an understanding of these, in, these incredible medical devices. So here's my website. If you have any information that you want to get from me, please contact me. So my goal is to give you some basic science to try and improve implants in your hands. And what I really want to share with you is why these succeed and why they fail. So let's start with something very, very basic. Let's look at the sciences. We're going to start with biology. Let's have a look at what happens in the biological world with dental implants. I want to share with you why I believe that these work, why they integrate with bone and bone cells can grow around them, and why they fail. I'm also going to share with you something about the chemistry of implants. Titanium in particular, incredible metal. I'm going to explain to you how you can change this titanium, how you can either make it more retentive or you can damage it by things such as fluoride that occur naturally in the mouth when we use anti-caries agents. And we're going to look at physics, a little bit about how does a screw work? Because this is very confounding for many dentists. They don't really understand the mechanics of screw joints. They also don't understand why things fail. For example, why the zirconia would break here or why you would get this tissue response to titanium that produces a black hue. So in order to start, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about chemistry and physics. This is something I've got very interested in. Titanium is an incredible metal. In fact, it's a metal that we use because of its great biocompatibility. But one of the issues with it is its metal colour, it's grey. So we've started to look at things like colours under soft tissues. We don't like a blue-grey hue because it looks unnatural. So what started to happen is we started to look at things like pink aesthetic scores. And we found that taking a titanium abutment such as this and titanium nitride coating it will produce a more favourable yellow-gold hue. And that makes the aesthetics look so much better. However, one of the problems with this type of coating that we put on these implants is it can cause a disease process, an allergy. And this has been quoted in the Journal of Prosthetic Dentistry by Lim. What he basically did was have a patient who had an allergic response to some implant abutments that were coated with titanium nitride. And in order to prove this, they did a patch test on the patient. And they found a positive response with regard to allergy. So, although it gives us a nice colour, biologically it may not be inert. So what I'm going to do to you is I'm going to explain to you how we can actually make the same kind of colour but out of the natural material of titanium. Instead of titanium nitride coating, what we're going to do is we're going to look at different types of coatings that are biologically inert. Now one of the fundaments of looking at titanium nitride coatings are things like this. Now they've been changed and they're evolving into things such as this, where we're now coating them with titanium carbon nitride. The problem with this is the companies can't tell you whether this is biologically inert, as good as titanium nitride, or as good as titanium because they're not doing the research. So somebody has to start asking and demanding, why do we have these colours and are they biologically inert or are they active and cause disease? So there is an alternative. Instead of titanium nitride coating, 
which is not titanium dioxide, which is the surface layer on titanium that makes it biocompatible. What we're going to do is we're going to anodize the titanium. We're going to take titanium that looks like this, and with a few household goods, you can actually make it look like this. The surface on these two is identical. It's titanium dioxide. The only difference is the thickness. The thickness on the silver one is about 5 to 20 nanometers. A nanometer is a thousandth of a micron. The picture that is gold, the thickness is about 80 nanometers. And all that's doing is, this is a clear layer that's taking white light from the environment and actually transferring it by interference into yellow. So they're exactly the same chemically. And what this particular process does is it's self-limiting. It takes about 10 seconds. We've published papers on this in the Journal of Prosthetic Dentistry, and it produces exactly the same titanium dioxide layer that you see on conventional silver titanium abutments. So let's talk a little bit about titanium. Titanium is a highly reactive metal. If you take a piece of titanium and you polish it in an oxygen environment such as air, you get titanium dioxide. That's what causes its biocompatibility. Now, as I said before, you can change this clear layer and thicken it, and you can produce light colored effects. So what we're going to do here is we're going to talk about where this came from. The first people to come up with this idea were actually ophthalmic surgeons. If you're unfortunate enough to lose a cornea and you cannot get a donor, what they do is they use a titanium button that they actually sew into the eye. Now the problem with the titanium button is the colour. So what these ophthalmologists did was they used anodization to change the colours into blues and browns. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that so you can do this in your office and you can change the perspective of the aesthetics. So here's a titanium abutment which has an invisible coat. If we thicken the coat we get a change in colour. And what I'm going to do is show you exactly how that works. So this is something you can do very simply and it's highly productive for you. These are the colours that you can produce by applying a voltage and using something like Diet Cola. These are all the different colours that titanium will actually produce. Now the companies use these colours to identify their components, but we can go one step better. We can use the pinks and the yellows to change the colour underneath tissues very easily. So if I take a titanium abutment like this, after placing this in a solution, putting 60 volts on it for 10 seconds, I make it gold. Or if I want to get really fancy, how about two-tone? So this is how it works. What you're going to do is pass an electrical current through something like an electrolyte, either an acid or some material that allows electricity to run through it. And you're just simply going to connect a voltage to it. You're going to put the titanium in there for about 10 seconds and it will change its colour. So we often use batteries, like these household batteries. We connect them together. The negative goes through some foil into the electrolyte. The positive side of the battery goes onto the abutment. And I'm going to show you how that works. So if you look at this picture, this video, I'm placing a current through the video and you will see, sorry, through the, through the electrolyte, you'll see the colour change. As your reference, look at the top of the titanium, the yellow colour. You'll see that yellow colour maintains its position and its, its shade, whereas you can see the darkening of the abutment. If we leave this long enough and we change the voltage up, we can make this yellow, pink, but I'm going to make it blue for you so you can see what the colour difference is. And again, the surface on this is titanium dioxide. It has the same biological component as normal silver titanium. So if you take a look now, you'll see it's starting to go blue. And this is a permanent colour that is produced on this abutment. If you don't like it, you simply polish it off. The air will then re-oxidise the surface of titanium and you're back to exactly where you are. And it has no, no emphasis on fit at all. And so these are the kind of colours that the companies use. But what we can do is to go one stage further and make it more effective for us. And this is how it works. This is thin film interference. It's a physics effect. This is where the physics comes in. If you get a drop of clear oil, put it on water, you get this coloration. If you take a CD-ROM, you all know a CD-ROM is not coloured. If you tilt it to the light, you'll see the colours that develop. This is thin film interference. It's exactly the same physical phenomena that gives these colours or these, these um, components the colours that we see. 
So if you want to know more about the biology, the physics, the mechanics and the chemistry of what we do, contact me, Cementless in Seattle. It would be great to hear from you. And that's my practice inspiration for today.